Uh, also, international collaboration with other healthcare systems, including healthcare systems from Europe, uh, Asia. Uh, we should all be collaborating with each other, and certainly uh, many uh, cancer centers here are starting to collaborate with Asian universities to actually look at their system of healthcare and see what <laughs> we can contribute to them and what they can contribute to us. So the future of cancer control lies in the successful integrative approach of evidence-based complementary therapies and mainstream medicine in collaboration with all healthcare providers and based on a common understanding of the need for efficacy, safety, and cost-effectiveness. The development of integrative oncology had a slow start. It developed from a place of caution, determining what works, what doesn't work, what had adverse effects, and what was safe. However, we couldn't have taken this further without you, the public, reminding us all the time that there is a need for more comprehensive cancer control processes and that these have been strongly uh, expressed and identified by our patient advocates who we're very proud of, uh, including uh, uh, a major advocate here, Helen Moss, who we thank very much for bringing many of these issues to our attention. Whole person cancer care is encompassed by the term integrative oncology, I believe, and it is a system of cancer control. It is an evolutionary system that's developing. It consists of many interconnected parts, and the skill is bringing these parts together. New programs for cancer control will be complex, but we need to deal with complexity and comprehensive, and therefore this will result in synergistic improvements in health outcomes. We have more complex research methodologies and auditing techniques, but we can deal with that. The simple approach isn't always the best approach. Uh, when you come to health, it has to be a complex approach, but at the same time, we need to distill it to a very distinct message, and that is of keeping people healthy for as long as possible. So although more research is required, the current indicators suggest that integrative oncology will enhance the quality of life and the rehabilitation of patients and contribute to preventing further cancers in survivors and their families within a coherent, I repeat, a coherent public health program of cancer control. This should not be limited to the ivory towers, as we used to call them in the United Kingdom, not the main teaching hospitals. This should percolate out into the community. Ideal future strategies will include introducing these interventions earlier in order to enhance the primary prevention of cancer and the incorporation of long-term economic analysis to better substantiate the potential benefits to society which we believe are achievable from a new program of integrative medicine. The future lies in the best integrative medicine for our globalized society and it will begin here in Cleveland because we've visited here for the last three days and believe me we haven't got much sleep because we've listened to literally hundreds of fascinating, enthusiastic, energetic, intelligent uh, people who really love their patients and uh, really want to do, have the opportunity to do more for them, not do less. They, they feel that they'd like to have the opportunities to provide more uh, contact with the patients and the ability to provide more education and skills in support of their patients. So I'd like to also uh, repeat what was announced yesterday uh, by the uh, Dr. Gerson and the Helen Moss Foundation. It's going to be a fundraising drive to um, raise $1.5 million to finance a chair and professorship in integrative oncology, which will be a focus of a program that will bring uh, many of these uh, issues into the limelight and allow people to work to the best of their ability to fulfill the goals. The people of Cleveland will be at the forefront of new programs of transdisciplinary research to prolong the life of cancer patients, and you will further enhance your reputation for innovation and excellence in patient care. Thank you. Today at the City Club of Cleveland, we are listening to Dr. Stephen Sager and Dr. Gary Dang on holistic health and in integrative cancer care. We will return to our speakers in a minute for our traditional City Club questions. We encourage you to formulate your questions now and remind you that your questions should be brief and to the point. We welcome all of you here and those listening on WCPN 90.3 FM, WCLV, WTAM, or one of the many radio stations across the country. Radio broadcasts of the City Club are made possible through the generous support of Case Western Reserve University. Our television broadcast partners are WVIZ, PBS Idea Stream, and Time Warner Cable. Television broadcasts are supported by National City, now a part of PNC, and Cleveland State University. 
Closed captioning is supported by Nordson Corporation, and our live webcasts are supported by the University of Akron. We wish to thank our program partner, the Helen Moss Breast Cancer Research Foundation, National City Bank, now a part of PNC, and Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine. Please uh, give a round of applause for those partners. We appreciate their generous support, and today is also the annual Progressive Corporation Endowed Forum. We would like to thank Progressive for its generous gift to the City Club Forum Foundation. Also today, we are pleased to welcome guests at tables hosted by Baker Hostetler, CWRU School of Medicine, the Helen Moss Breast Cancer Foundation, and Richard Fleischman and Partners. Now, we would like to return to our speakers for our traditional City Club question and answer period. We welcome questions from everyone, including our guests. Holding the microphone today is PR and Programs Manager Carrie Miller and Assistant Development Director Marcella Brown. Now, first question, please. Appreciate your emphasis on integrated health care or integrative uh, care. And uh, my question has to do somewhat with my daughter's background. She is uh, trained in Ayurvedic medicine, which in the Midwest here most people have never heard of. Um, I, I go to parties and I say, that's what my daughter does, and they say, what? Um, but I, it leads to my question. Um, she's in Bozeman, Montana. There isn't a, a center like we have here in Cleveland. So part of the question is, how soon does it get to places like that, that integrative health care is important? Is there going to be, in the, in the reform effort of our country, any emphasis on um, third-party payments? Because what she does with the kinds of things you talk about aren't covered. I think that's enough of my question. You can take it from there. <laughs> Um, that, that's a very good question. It also applies to uh, other whole systems uh, like uh, Chinese medicine. Um, the problem has been up until now is that there's really been a lack of data as to whether there are improved health outcomes. I mean, Gary and I know that if you follow these regimens, um, there, there are excellent outcomes because they do focus on improving your nutritional status. They focus on exercise, yoga, uh, stretch exercises that reduce tension and, and, and make you fitter. And they also focus on the mind-body connection, reducing stress and massage, etc. For the last, I would say, for the last 10-15 uh, years, uh, Gary and myself and others uh, have really been distilling the evidence that exists and doing studies to actually demonstrate that some of these techniques do have positive health outcomes. And in fact, many of these techniques do, and, and both Gary and I have many publications uh, to actually demonstrate that. Gary actually led um, um, a publication recently, which there were about 10 authors on, which actually looked at the best evidence for many of these uh, techniques that people can refer to and use this uh, with their policy directors to try and get some of these uh, treatments uh, either available or covered. But I think you have to understand that change is going to be very slow unless one actually uh, focuses on the research, and research, unfortunately, is slow. Having said that, research is also about critical mass. So if enough people are doing the research, the results come through quicker. So I would suggest at the start we need more uh, financing from grant programs to actually allow this sort of research to be done. We believe it would have huge economic spin-offs long-term, increasing the health of the nation. 